Hello and welcome to Clinical Exam Series with Dr. Piro. In this video, we are going to discuss examination of the facial nerve. There are going to be three parts of this video. In the first part, I'll tell you how to carry out the facial nerve examination. The second aspect will show you a brief anatomy of the facial nerve so that we can make meaning from the findings that we are going to get clinically. The third part is going to demonstrate facial nerve examination clinically for you to understand. Now, the facial nerve supplies motor innervation to the muscles of facial expression. It also supplies taste to the anterior to third of the tongue. It also innervates the stapedius muscle of the middle ear to regulate sound intensity in the ear. And we are going to test these domains when we are examining for the facial nerve. When examining for the facial nerve, it is best the patient is seated directly facing you so that you can have a good exposure of the face of the patient. As in all clinical examination, we start by greeting the patient, obtaining informed consent from the patient of exactly what we want to do, assuring the patient that we are not going to cause any harm, screening the patient appropriately and use any PPE provided such as your glove and your mask when carrying out the inspection. We start this examination by inspecting the face of the patient and here we are going to be looking for ptosis, reddening of the eye, loss of the nasolabia foam and deviation of the angle of the mouth. We can make this more obvious by asking the patients to smile, to bare their teeth and to whistle. Asking the patient to smile, to bare their teeth or to whistle will accentuate facial muscle weakness. Next, we are going to ask the patient to close their eyes. And when they close their eyes, we look for adequate closure of the eyelid. Next, we ask the patient to shut their eyes and prevent us from opening it. And you attempt to open their eyes against resistance. The next step is to ask the patient to puff up their cheek and to prevent you from deflating it. You will easily deflate the cheek of a patient with facial nerve paralysis. The next aspect is to test the taste sensation in the anterior to third of the tongue. And we use familiar substances like table salt, sugar or honey to assess sensation in the anterior to third of the tongue. Next, we ask the patient to close their eyes and we look out for adequate closure of both eyelids and possible rolling up of the eyeballs. The last step for examination of the facial nerve is to check for hyperacusis in the ear and we do this by rubbing our fingers by the sides of the ear. Patients with facial nerve injury would perceive this sound as very distressing. The next aspect of this video is going to show us a brief anatomy of the facial nerve. In this part of the video, we are going to focus on the anatomy of the facial nerve but we are going to be concerned only about the motor component such that we can make inferences from our clinical findings when we are carrying out the facial nerve examination. So we are going to be focusing only on the motor components of the facial nerve here. Now let us quickly reconstruct the brain so that we can have our bearing. Let's assume that this is one hemisphere of the brain and this is another hemisphere of the brain. This will be the right part of the brain and this will be the left part of the brain. Let's quickly put here the midbrain and then let's put here the point. This will continue here as the medulla and the medulla will continue as the spinal cord. Now, to top up our, our diagram, let us draw a smiley face. Complete with eyes and a mouth. Now, the facial nerve nucleus is located in the lower aspect of the pons. The facial nerve nucleus is located in the lower aspect of the pons. And conceptually, it is divided into an upper part and a lower part. Now, the upper part of that facial nerve nucleus supplies the upper part of the face. So this is going to be mainly the frontal branch of the facial nerve. The lower part, however, supplies both the lower part of the face the lower part supplies the lower part of the face. This has to be very clear in our mind before we continue. Now, this is also true on the contralateral aspect as well. To consciously control facial expression, however, fibers come from the motor area of the brain and this is going to be in Broadman area 4 of the motor cortex. So fibers come from the motor cortex to synapse on the facial nerve nucleus which further innervates the muscles of facial expression. But this happens in a very peculiar way. The fibers from the right hemisphere synapse on both the upper parts of the, of the facial nerve nucleus as well as the lower parts of the facial nerve nucleus. This is very important for us to know. 
so it happens in a contralateral fashion. The fibers, however, from the left hemisphere only synapse on the upper parts of the facial nerve nucleus. This has to be very, very clear in our mind. The, it means the upper parts of the facial nerve re, receives innervation from both hemispheres, while the lower parts only receive innervation from the contralateral hemisphere. This is going to mean a lot when we start talking about upper motor neuron lesions and lower motor neuron lesions. By the way, upper motor neurons just means that these neurons synapse on other neurons, while lower motor neurons synapse or end in neuromuscular junctions. Clinically, this means when there is an upper motor neuron lesion, the lower part of the facial nerve nucleus is most affected. The reason why is because the upper part receives innervation from both hemispheres of the brain, while the lower part only receives innervation from the contralateral aspect. So when there is an upper motor neuron lesion, it is clearly seen by weakness, especially in the lower aspect of the face. When there is a lower motor neuron lesion, however, both the upper part of the face and the lower part of the face will be affected. So, so both the upper part of the face and the lower aspect of the face will be weak. Clinically, when there is weakness of the muscle of facial expression, the angle of the mouth is deviated to the unaffected side. So when there is deviation of the angle of the mouth, for example in this case to the right part, you know there is either a lower motor neuron lesion or an upper motor neuron lesion. The way to differentiate whether it is upper or lower is simply to check for the upper part of the face. If the patient is able to wrinkle their forehead, it means the upper part of the face is spared and that means it is likely an upper motor neuron lesion since upper motor neuron lesions will spare the upper part of the face. This is the origin of the phrase upper spares upper. In the other parts of this video, we are going to demonstrate how to carry out facial nerve examination clinically.